Welcome back everybody to part three of my return to flight series on my E-model pits. Now, if you haven't watched parts one and two, you might wanna go watch those because in that video, I kinda of explained the whole history of this airplane and my goals for the airplane and some of the issues that it has. And I thought I could go through those issues, get them cleaned up and get this airplane airborne again, which technically I could do, but I know that it's going to take me a while. So I wound up buying another pits. It's a D model pits, which you may have seen in other videos. And I decided to completely restore this airplane. And that involves cutting off the fabric, sandblasting the airframe down, repainting it, putting in new instruments, new avionics, either a new engine or I'll have this engine rebuilt. I don't know yet if I'm going to put on a constant speed prop or a fixed pitch prop. That's quite a ways in the future. This airplane project is not my focus right now. My main focus is on finishing up my Xena Super Duty. But, you know, I can't work on the Super Duty 24 hours a day. There are some times where I just don't feel like working on it or I'm waiting for parts or waiting for help from somebody. So I figured I'd kind of get started with the pits just for fun. I'll do a little bit here and there. And um, when the Super Duty's done, I'll be that much further ahead on the pits. So with that said, let me show you what I've got started doing with restoring this airplane. The first thing I did is probably the easiest, and that is to remove the two lower ailerons. And I stripped the fabric off. And parts like this, like this little bracket right here, I took off and kind of cleaned it up, reprimed it, and installed it. Cleaned up the wood a little bit around here, just made a nicer cut than what they had. But uh, everything's in really good shape here. I mean, the ailerons are just perfect, really. It was kind of simple to do. In fact, both of these right now are ready for fabric covering. I just kind of cleaned up these a little bit, polished them up a little bit. They will get painted again, but uh, just took off 30 years of, uh, not corrosion, but just gunk that builds up on them. So everything's looking good with the ailerons. Those are all ready to go. After the ailerons were done, it was time to move on to the wings. And that just used the same process of slicing off the fabric. And I tried to take it off in as big of sheets as I could. So the whole, pretty much the whole top and bottom came off as one sheet. Here it is laying on the hanger floor. The bottom left wing is completely stripped down. And with the fabric off, here is the fabric on the ground right there. That was a little bit of a job to remove. But I'm really surprised at what good a shape this airplane is in. There's no corrosion on the inside at all. All of these bell cranks and stuff look really good. You know, the push rods are nice. The, these, these rotate easily. I'll probably spray some lube in the bearings just to clean them if they are dirty. Uh, the push rods look great. Now this push rod back here, you can see I have removed the black paint from it. That's the push rod that goes from on this side here. It goes from here all the way into the cockpit and connects to the, the control stick. And that one there, there were a couple little rust spots on that one. And I think the reason why is because it gets scraped a lot and then once the paint gets scraped off, it, it started to rust just a little bit. Just a few little spots, but what I do is I remove the black paint on there and I'm going to take it and have it powder coated white. And so that one will look really nice. That's the one that, like I said, it's visible inside the cockpit. And uh, I'll have it powder coated instead of painting it because being inside the cockpit, it would be a little more prone to getting beat up. And the powder coating is a lot stronger than paint. So I'm gonna drop that off at the powder coaters today. But uh, the wing looks really good. I don't have to replace any of the leading edge aluminum. It's in perfect condition. So I'm just really happy with with uh, this airplane. You can see there's no corrosion on the nuts and bolts. Everything just looks really good. It's going to make it pretty easy. Just uh, clean it up a bit and uh, put a layer of fabric on it. Currently what I am doing on this wing is I'm removing this protective tape here. And when you cover a tube and fabric airplane, there's a tape that goes on all these sharp edges. 
where you'll have a flat piece like this and then the fabric comes up. And what it does, it just protect, or it's a protective layer. It doubles up the layer on that edge so it doesn't tend to cut into the fabric. And uh, this tape that they used is 30 years old and it's more like a strapping tape. And actually, as, as I'm pulling this off, this is coming off really nice. So you can see, I'm gonna remove all this and put new tape on. But what I've just done is I've removed all the tape from this edge here. And it was really tough to get off. It leaves a, a, all the, the gummy residue on there. And MEK cleans that off really nice. That was easy to clean. But I have that tape also over here on the fiberglass tip. So I've kind of tried to peel it off here. I don't want to use the MEK on here because I don't know if it'll damage the resin in the fiberglass. And then I noticed here they have some Bondo and it, it's, not, it's not sanded in very well. There's kind of a sharp edge here. So what I'll do is I'll get a sanding block and sand this smooth. And then if I have to, I'll put another small coat over that to even it out. Uh, so just to clean that up a little bit. But other than that, it's, it's fared into the edges real nice. Uh, so that's the next step on the tip. Now you can just see from a quick sanding there where you see this dust you can see that that's the low points on here. There's some low points up here. So what I'll do is I'll sand this down a little bit more to get it even with this. And you can kind of see this whole valley right in here. And then what I'll do is I'll put another real thin coat of Superfill right on top of that. Well, I finished sanding this. I've cleaned it with alcohol and I've mixed up some of this two-part Superfill. And I will use this hotel key to spread it on here, let it dry overnight, sand it off, and this will all be perfectly smooth. That's it, just a very, very thin layer. And I'll let that dry overnight and sand it off. And this wing tip will be done. You know, one of the things I did notice when I was pulling this fabric off the wing is there's a lot of areas where the fabric really felt kind of brittle. And I don't know if you know, but they do make a tool that tests aircraft fabric to see if it's still retaining its proper strength. And that tool was like $900 or $1,000 or something like that. Because at one point I was going to buy one and then I decided not to when I saw the price. But all it is, is this little tool. It kind of looks like a center punch like this. And it's just got a, a little end to it. And then I think there's like built in a gauge or something. What you do is you, you push it on the fabric and you put on so many pounds of force. And I think that's what the gauge tells you on it. And if it pokes a hole in the fabric, well, your fabric's no good. If it doesn't poke a hole, then your fabric's good. Now, I don't have one of those testers, but I'm thinking just for fun, let's go see if we can punch a hole in the wing with this center punch. So here we have the bottom of the wing. And I do want to point out that I'm using this center punch and it has a pretty sharp edge to it. In fact, I can feel a burr on there. And I would imagine the proper tool probably has more of a rounded edge uh, so it doesn't poke into it if it doesn't have to. Remember, this is not a scientific test. This doesn't prove anything. All I want to do is, since I'm cutting this fabric off anyway, I just thought I'd see how easy it might be to poke a hole in this fabric. So let's use this and give it a try. <laughs> Piece of wood right there. Well, it's interesting. It, it didn't poke a hole, but it started to tear it a little bit. Let's try another one here. Can you see that on there? Here, let me see if I can see if I can zoom in here. Where are we at on the camera? Right about here. All right, let's try this. It, so what it did right now is it's, it poked a hole through the paint, but it didn't poke a hole through the fabric yet. 
and I'm, I'm pushing on there pretty hard. I mean, really hard. There, finally went through. I think that's way more force than a, a, a gauge would, would have you do. But right there, it's pretty easy to poke a hole through the paint. And I think it's easy to poke a hole through the paint, like I said, because of the really sharp edge that's on here. Um, my guess, and this is just a pure guess based on my highly scientific test, is that this fabric is probably, it probably would pass that test because I had to put a lot of force on there to actually poke that hole in the fabric. It does damage the paint fairly easy, but even again, like I said, I think that's just because of the sharp edge on here. So, interesting. Well, that's it for this video. It's a short video and I just wanted to give you an update on this airplane. If you want to follow along, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Now, just so you know, I'm not going to film absolutely everything I do to this airplane. I'm not going to document it like I've done with my Super Duty, if you're familiar with how I've been filming that. But I will keep you up to date on it. I'll show you how I put the fabric covering on and rib stitching and all that kind of stuff. But what I'll do is probably just film the major steps in getting this airplane airborne or returned to flight. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you, I guess, on episode number four.